Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2017. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Columbia, Tennessee, where I hear it might be a little windy today. So if we <laughs> lose you, I hope hope you're okay oh, with a, a very special guest by the name of Kevin Tates. Kevin, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am ready to pop that clutch, man. Let's make some stripes on the road. <laughs> yeah, we'll have some fun now. Talking about making stripes, here's a guy today who makes a lot of color. He knows how to paint and do a whole lot more, and we're going to learn about that in a moment. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that people don't, may not know about you, Kevin? One thing that people may not know about me is that I failed miserably in the music industry. I fell flat on my face and my butt at the same time, and I am a failed musician. You're a failed <laughs> So, so well, sorry to start your life that way. What, no, it's a, what were you going to do in the music? Were you like a, a, a musician or singer? Oh, I was a front man. I was a rock singer in the 80s. I spent about 10 years of my life on the road. I was the guy that would climb up on the PA stack and do a scream like Robert Plant, jump down and kick the drink off your table, buy the house around and keep the party going. That was me. Whoa. I was a rock and roll guy. I had a long black hair with a red streak down the side. I had a four octave vocal range. I was. Uh, we were writing and recording all over Canada and the United States. And um, just through a, for a bunch of different reasons, uh, it never happened primarily because I lost my voice. Oh, well, that that could stop things. Yeah. It does. It tends to. When you're a singer that can't sing, you have to find a different vocation. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I lost my voice when puberty hit and I was singing in the choir at church. And all of a sudden, the choir the guy said, maybe you might want to just stick to the guitar, Mark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I had one of those real high-pitched voices as a, you know, young man, young boy, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, I turned into that, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, I had to fight through that, too. Yeah, I started playing music in, in high school in bands. My first, recorded my first album when I was 15, but no, we were kidding. gigging out in bars when I was 14 years old. They used to ask for lettuce in the back door, and wow. on our breaks, we had to go outside again because we weren't able to, we weren't old enough, you know, To be in the bar, yeah. To be in the bar, yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. Well, very cool. That's why I like to ask that question. Well, give, let me give give you a proper introduction because you are uh, you're making waves and doing some very cool things. Kevin Tates has had a career in collision repair and restoration and using his talents, he launched Paint Education. Say that 10 times fast <laughs> back in 1999 or sing it 10 times fast. Uh, a series of award-winning instructional videos focusing on fundamental automotive restoration and refinishing techniques. He also writes for many magazines, including Nashville Arts, Southern and Northern Rotter, Mustang and Ford, Carcraft, Mustang Monthly, Carcraft, Wheel Hub, Carcraft, I said that twice, and, and Truck Hub. Kevin has hosted his own TV series since 2000, including three seasons of classic rides on the DIY network and nine seasons hosting and co-producing the popular trucks TV series on the spike network. Currently his show hands on cars airs on Amazon prime with a third season in the works. Kevin's new book patina creating and preserving is available through car tech. My friends at car Trek, they send me all sorts of cool books and mm -hmm. he is developing an online trade school paint education university that will be available late summer. He's a busy guy. We'll be back with Kevin, but first a word, from our valued sponsors. We'll give them a little listen and we'll be right back. I love Covercraft's new five layer all climate cover. It was developed and engineered for anything Mother Nature can throw our way. It's very soft, breathable, and easy to store and pampers your paint and interior surfaces, providing maximum UV, rain, dust, and snow protection. Add their gust guards for windy conditions for extra protection. Their five-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form and fit with a quality and attention that's been their standard since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft. Too. Every one of my vehicles is protected by a Covercraft cover. And I have a deal for you. Use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping. Just type in the word YA, Y E A H, 2 1 at checkout, YA21 at Covercraft.com. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. 
Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? I didn't. Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework, I shopped around, and I found American Collectors Insurance. And that's who protects my Porsche Turbo. That's right, the one I call my Orange Crush. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. So, Kevin, we are back. Well, you are a busy guy since you stopped rocking and rolling. You're out there teaching people how to do a lot of cool things. And we're going to talk about that in depth a little bit more. But first, I want to go back to you stopped rocking and rolling and you had to find a way to make a living and do something. And you went into the field of preserving, restoring and caring for cars and you became this expert in the paint world. So kind of walk us through those early days. So the reason I was I became an expert is because I came off the road. Uh, I didn't do music anymore. It just absolutely devastated me. It was this absolute full circle. It, it, it crushed my soul. It crushed my ego. It crushed my spirit. And I, and, and I had to do something. I grew up around cars and music. My dad's a body guy and a musician. And I fell back on what it is that I knew how to do. In between bands, I would always work at shops in different parts of the country. Um, so I got cross-trained unintentionally while I was doing in my rock and roll tenure. And so I was married at the time and it's like, okay, I'm 30 years old. It didn't work for me. I did not grab the brass ring. A lot of great experience, a lot of almost, but I had 10 wasted years. That's the mantra that was in the back of my head. You got 10 wasted years, pal, step up. What are you going to do? How are you going to bring home the bacon for your family? So the answer to that is I'm going to get a job in a body shop and I'm going to work my buns off and I'm going to try and be the best technician I can be. I'm going to be take every single certification class that I can take and get my money up, get my skills up so I can contribute to the household that I'm now a part of. My wife is an entrepreneur. She had a children's dance school. Uh, she, she's uh, retired from it now, but she had a children's dance school for 30 years and was cross-trained in ballet, m- multiple wow. different disciplines, had her K through six education degree. So you talk about mentors in life. She's been one of my biggest mentors and uh, a, a driven, brilliant woman that, you know, I'm, I'm standing in the same room as Judy. I'm going to say, <laughs> I got to step up for this. So that's what created my technical foundation in, in the automotive repair and restoration. Well, let's talk about uh, some of the things you've done since, because you've done a lot of things on video film, I guess it would say, or on video. You've done a podcast. I mean, you've put yourself out there in front. And what I love about you is, you know, you're not a guy that sits around, that's for sure. You put your hands in a lot of different things. So kind of walk through some of these areas of teaching other people that you got involved with, because you obviously love to show people how to do things better. You know, when I was trying to get my skills up, I would ask people around me, you know, my first paint job was horrible. And I, I would ask the guy, hey, how do you not get runs in the side? How do you get the color from being splotchy? And everybody, almost 100 percent of the people said, well, I'd like to learn my own way. You figure it out. Oh, so man. that really it really browned me off. And, and I thought, you know what? I don't want to be that guy. When I decided to create paint education in 1998 and create an instructional videotape, which was actually my wife's idea on how to do fun. You could buy – John Kosmoski had the House of Color video, how to do his candies. Craig Frazier and all the airbrush gods had these airbrush videos where you could learn how to do a flaming skull on the side of a dune buggy or something like that. But nobody was teaching fundamentals, and I had a grasp on fundamentals. And the benefit that I brought over from music is that TV studio is a recording studio with a camera. I was unafraid of that. I was unintimidated. I'm not going to say unafraid because fear is a relative thing, and we learn how to twist and manipulate and use our nervousness and anxiety to an advantage. It creates energy. So anyway, so I knew how to do that. So I decided to create a video, paint your own car. And I tried to sell it in 
paint shops, stores, the tool trucks that come around to the, and nobody was buying it. I was selling one and two. And then I just, I had the nerve to call the 800 number on the front of the Eastwood catalog. And the lady answered and I said, hey, I've got a video that I made on how to paint a car and you guys sell videos in your catalogs and I think you should sell my video. And she didn't hang up on me. She said, oh, well, you need to talk to our buyer, John Sloan. Hold, please. And she put me in touch with her head buyer and I sent him a video. And, and he said, well, I can't promise you anything, but I'm going to look at this and we'll get back with you. Lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, John Sloan calls me back and said, Kevin, we've looked at this video. We really like this video and, and we want to start selling it in our catalogs. And do you have any more? And it was like, bam, I had Whoa. a distributor. Yeah, I had a series because I said, no, I don't. But give me about a month and I'll have you another one. And so now I had momentum. Yeah. And my first distributor, I've got framed the first purchase order check that I got in. Now I wasn't selling onesie twosies anymore. I was selling them by the dozens. Yeah. And and that grew um, exponentially. And so that gave me that fire in my gut that, man, I can do this. I had a busy job in the collision shop. I was making good money as a technician, but now I had that performance career again. So it was like it, it, it kind of lit a fire under me again. And it really gave me that inspiration to where I could now be in a visual media. And, and of course, you know, I'll, I'll paraphrase and I'll truncate all of this, but having that experience. I was unafraid of the camera. I was a good walk-on guest on DIY Network. I could parlay my skills for advertisement. Stacy David, the original host of Trucks, featured my videos when I did custom paint jobs for him. He said, hey, you like this paint job? Buy Kevin's video from Eastwood. It's uh, blah, 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 blah. So I got promotion that I couldn't possibly afford. I did barter deals with magazines. I would write articles for free in exchange for a vertical third column in the back of the book. And I got the internal editorial with my name on the masthead. So all of these things over the course of, of uh, between 99 and maybe 2002, uh, all of these things helped me create momentum in my company and establish a name for myself and, quite frankly, create this alternative of income that eclipsed my uh, collision repair income in, in a busy body shop, which you can make good money as a technician. So the story is, and this is the God's honest truth, I found myself in a spray suit with a cell phone in one hand, a loaded spray gun in the other hand, my phone's ringing, and I didn't know, I was so stressed out, I didn't know which one to answer. <laughs> So we had the family meeting on something's got to give. I can't do this anymore. We were making twice the money with paint education than I was in the collision shop. So we did that. We had the family decision to where we're going to give it a shot. And you want to talk about the motivation I had as as a failed musician now in collision repair. I had 10 wasted years, buddy. I had something to prove. Yeah, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to absolutely. So. You talk about being multi-talented. You know, the, the, the phrase is we got to have five streams of income at any given time. So I took that to heart because I, yeah, I couldn't depend on any one thing. I couldn't depend on freelance writing. I couldn't depend on restoration um, because I'm a one man show. I couldn't depend on the little the television stuff that I was doing. So I had to do all of it and all of it backfed education. So that's why I've kept this multitasking whack-a-mole game of my life over the last few years <laughs> that I've like really... It. I've really come to a joy because it's it's uh, it's really rewarding on so many levels and, and not egotistically, but it's 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 rewarding on on the give back, which, you know, uh, Mark, I finally figured out what it is I want to do when I grow up. I'm 58 years old. I know what I want to do now. Uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher and I live in service. That's my goal now is I'm 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 in the process of service and giving back and empowering and educating. Well, it, it's wonderful. And I'll tell you what, I've interviewed now 2017 people here on Cars. Yeah. And when you interview that many people, you learn some things and there's a consistency. Yeah. My regular listeners know this, but I always bring it up. There's a consistency of learning for me here. And that is how to be happy. Well, one yeah. is to work in a field you enjoy, like you have, like I have. I love cars. You love cars. There's lots of ways to do it. And that's why I started my podcast. But the other part of this is what you said giving back to others, helping yes. others. And the fact that you discovered later in life that it wasn't all about the Kevin rock and roller performing, it was about the Kevin teaching so other mm -hmm. people can move forward. It kind of goes back to the age old, and I'm going to get in trouble for this because my good friend, listener, Chris, I always quote this Bible verse wrong, but I'm going to say it wrong again. Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach yes. a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Sorry, Chris, I'll get that right someday. But <laughs> the premise- but the spirit of that is beautiful, is right? there. Yeah, it is. And that's what you've, you, you've done. And your TV shows are just one of these five fingers of, of income streams. You figured out how to leverage this whole thing, which is very cool because you've, you've done the same thing on a variety of different TV shows. 
Yes. The TV shows that I choose to be involved with are not the wrench throwing shows. They're not the shows to where we get frustrated in the shop. We go skeet shooting or go-kart racing. That's entertainment TV. That's fine. I watch those shows. I'm friends with those guys that are on those shows. That's not the television that I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of something that empowers the viewer, that gives a little something, something, gives back and shows you how to do how to TV. It's square. It's boring. My friend Tim Strange, you know, when when we I first, <laughs> you know, met, you know, Tim said, I hate how to TV. It's boring. <laughs> so they, okay, <laughs> okay. You don't have to like it, but it's what I do, and it's what I love. So, so that's part of it too. So, the TV that I've uh, and that I'm doing now, my current show, Hands On Cars, Hands On Cars. You know, it's 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 a play on that. And now, by the way, it's also available on the Digital Lug app. If I can do a little plug for Ian yes. Johnson's company, Digital Lug is available on uh, ISO, Android, Roku, Samsung, things like that. So, it's a great free app that gives you unbelievably great uh, how-to content in a short form because everybody's attention span is a little bit shorter these days so we have six to eight minute episodes well you're a bit younger than me but did you ever think that at some point in our lives we were going to be able to reach out and touch so many people in so many different ways i sit here every day you know my day started this morning in london uh then i went to newport beach now i'm in tennessee later today i'm in texas i'm all over the place talking to people all over the world i've talked to people in almost every country in the world and sometimes i sit and pinch myself and say Wow. I mean, the stuff we get to do today and help people and reach out in so many ways is phenomenal. Isn't it fantastic? And what taught me the the power of the Internet and the power of television was participating in doing that. Being on the truck shows when Stacy held up my videos and said, buy Kevin's videos. Uh, let me tell you, the flood of sales that that caused, that, un- that taught me the power of television. When I was first marketing Paint Education, it was back in the days of the message boards and the user groups. And I would go in and I would help on all the body shop message boards. And I would say, hey, here's how to get rid of that fisheye problem. Or if you got rust bubbling through, here's how to take care of that. And by the way, I've got a video that'll help you too. So I led with integrity. I led with empowering and helping and instructing and backfed it with, by the way, I've got videos. So um, that was, it always, the moderators loved it because I was really good help and technical help. I've always prided myself on on being a good technician. And um, when I get to speak publicly at, at commencement ceremonies or, or keynotes or anything like that, I always lead with, I'm a, I'm, I'm a certified skilled technician. I'm an instructor. I'm a certified instructor. So I know what I know. And that has allowed me uh, the the career that I that I enjoy. But back to your back to your statement about the the globality, if that's even a word, <laughs> of the internet. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What what that's that's what the music industry was going to be. We're going to sell records worldwide. Well. The next best thing to that is that I can get on a computer. I have global sales with Paint Education. And now with the advent of streaming outlets, um, I don't even know where they're being streamed. So the unbelievable power of what it is that we have at our disposal. You and I are seeing each other crystal clear on a big – I've got a big monitor. When I first started doing television, the lens – on one of the cameras in the studio was $60,000 on a $40,000 jib with a $30,000 camera body and an eight-man crew yep. to make TV. Yeah. Now, you can do it on an iPhone, for God's sakes. You can do get you can get a $600 GoPro rig and make 4K television. So people listening and watching, your, your opportunity to create and make great content and get global distribution is at this, it's, it's the video revolution that's happening. Just yeah. like the audio revolution happened in the 90s for making records with the advent of digital Digital, uh, recording techniques and, and technology, it's happening right now. So people, soak it up. Yeah. <laughs> Make content. Get on those social media outlets. You know, show your wares. Show you. It's an unbelievable opportunity for to start a business. And what a cool thing to be a part of, right? There are no more excuses at all. You know, no. I mean, you no. can do it for so inexpensive. And you just have to work hard and be creative. You know, one of the things that you touched on earlier was your wife inspiring you. I would assume many people you've met along the way have been great inspirations. Is there someone, maybe a a big standout for you that's been a, a huge influence in your life, just like you've been an influence on other people's lives? There have been so many people that saw my passion and decided to give me a leg up. There's a couple. I want to mention a, a couple of names. First of all, is a guy that you're never going to hear of in the media. You're never going to hear of in magazines. He's just a guy with a family and a job. He was my body shop manager at Heritage Automotive in when I when I needed a place to film my first video. So I walk in. Jeff Perry is his name. I walk into Jeff's office and I said, Jeff, I know this is a big ask. I need to use the body shop for about the next four weekends in a row. 
And he said, why? Have you got a car you need to paint? And I said, no, I want to make a video on how to paint a car. And he started laughing. And I wasn't laughing. And he said, you're serious. And I said, yes, I'm serious. He said, okay, pay for your materials. Don't burn the place down. You've got your shop keys. That opened the gates to my entire media career. Without Jeff Perry giving me permission to do that with a million dollar body shop, I never, I wouldn't be speaking to you right now yeah. because he didn't, I, I might have found a place to do it, but all this whole chain of events. So I, I, I will always remember and think highly of Jeff Perry, um, Wayne Cook and Miles Cook in the, in the, the magazine business, um, the Jeff Ford, uh, Donald Farth. Those are the people that mentored me in, in the freelance technical world. Um, so there's, there's so many any mark I, I can't name them all but they're those are the few that that started me off and like i said recognize my passion and and my sponge for learning and that you know I believe that people with 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 a good heart um, have the heart of a teacher and always do want to pass on things and and those are the people that I want to emulate and those have been powerful mentors for me Awesome. I love it. We'll take another short break. We come back. We're going to talk a bit about a, a challenge because those things teach us very valuable lessons, even if they do hurt a lot. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Auto Geeks Blackfire SiO2 Spray Sealant. It's a spray on wipe off sealant that's quick, safe and easy to clean and protect your vehicles. I love using it on all my cars. Auto Geek's Blackfire SiO2 spray sealant is a spray-on wipe-away sealant that uses SiO2 ingredients to provide a slick, brilliant, and long-lasting shine. Silicon dioxide is known to be one of the most effective ingredients in car care products, and Blackfire spray sealant takes advantage of every stunning feature it has to offer. This sealant will protect your paint from road film, dirt, and other common contaminants while providing an impeccable, long-lasting, hydrophobic surface that forces water to sheet and bead on your paint for months. Go to autogeek.net to get yours and for the best product selections on the internet today, along with their skilled technical support. Autogeek.net is where I go for all my detailing needs. That's autogeek.net. Check them out today. 20, 50, or 100 years from now, will there be a workforce to care for the collector vehicles we love? With auto shop programs disappearing across the country, it's a question we enthusiasts have to ask. That's why I support the RPM Foundation, which exists to ensure that the critical skills necessary to preserve and restore these vehicles aren't lost to time. One of the many ways RPM, which is short for Restoration, Preservation, and Mentorship, is accomplishing this goal is through workforce development initiatives. The RPM Apprenticeship Program enables the next generation of artisans to earn a living while they learn the craft of restoring and preserving these vehicles directly from industry professionals. The Endangered Skills Program documents the process of masters training future craftspeople on a variety of critical skills in danger of being lost forever. For more information on how the RPM Foundation is driving the future of the collector vehicle skills trade, visit RPM Foundation today. They're one of the charities of choice here on Cars Yeah. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Kevin, let's talk about this because challenge, uh, you know, getting out of our comfort zone, something you did, something I did here, getting in front of a camera, getting in front of a microphone, uh, putting yourself out there in, in a variety of ways uh, is a learning lesson and sometimes can be a bumpy road. So take us on a, a huge challenge. But more importantly, what was that really valuable learning lesson? 
Well, here's something that, that I've thought about a lot lately. Of course, one of the, the biggest challenges for me was absolutely hitting the big giant reset button after my music career went away. And, and I will, was literally stripped of every idea uh, that, that I had formulated. I had no plan B. So the biggest challenge for me was starting over at 30 years old. And so, you know, now I'm in a career that I could not have possibly dreamt. But here's another challenge with that. There's a phrase that's called imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not familiar with that phrase, <laughs> it's the, the self-induced feeling of how did I get here and do I deserve the accolades? And, you know, I find myself in a position to where I've been doing this long enough to where I've garnered integrity and, and quite frankly, respect in the industries that I'm so proud to be in. Um, I've earned my stripes as a technician and I'm proud to say that I'm good at all the media stuff. I'm, I'm a good guest on shows and, and I'm a good talent on TV <laughs> because I've worked, yeah. I've worked so hard at it and skill is acquired. It's not a gift. There's nothing like that. But I find myself in the position to where I, I, I get intimidated by situations. I was asked to be a keynote speaker last year at a, at a an entrepreneur's event out in Arizona. And of course, I immediately said, yes. Oh, man. Wow. What a great opportunity to share my story. And then I started questioning it. Mm. Who am I? Yeah. Yep. Is it what, 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 who wants to hear my story mm -hmm. and why do you want to hear my story and how can other people benefit my story? And, and even asked to be, you know, I've been uh, a speaker at commencement ceremonies at trade schools and I just get so nervous thinking, man, I hope it's enough. I hope it's enough. I hope I'm enough. So this imposter syndrome has snuck up on me. And I think I'm kind of over that fulcrum of, of uh, realizing because of what other people and the feedback have given me. But the biggest challenge for me in, in the last, I'm going to say two years is imposter syndrome and getting past it. And I, and I don't say that in a boastful or a braggadocious way. We have to understand and own who it is that we are and that we've created. And um, ego is what and who you think you are. And if you can back that up with actual facts and experience, then you can have confidence. To me, a healthy ego is a confident persona. So I've figured out, um, and the biggest challenge for me has, has been how to, to move forward in situations like being a public speaker and being someone that can speak with authority on my life experience in a way that can pass it on to somebody else. And I can do that because I've done the homework, I've put in the work, I've put in the reps, and I feel like I can speak with authority because, um, again, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying if you had asked me even five years ago what I was going to be doing for my life, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 22 years now for Paint Education, if you would have said in 2022, uh, at the end of February, you're going to be talking to Mark Green about your life experience that's accumulated. And and uh, I, I couldn't have dreamt this up, man. <laughs> and it's come from so many yeah. fallen on my face failures, failing in business, failing in a careers, failing at, at entrepreneurship and, and all these things. And, and – um, the biggest challenge for me is wrapping my head around my life experience and realizing that somebody else can benefit from it. So I'm there, there now and I'm, I'm very proud that, that I can move forward. And that's uh, some of my next courses in Paint Education University are going to be based off of that. You know, uh, so I, I don't know. I hope that answers the question. It did wonderfully. And you know, the key thing, I've been in the same boat. I've been invited to be a keynote speaker at events and so forth. And I remember the first one I was invited to was a company down in Alabama, actually. And they had this three day event and they had hundreds of people coming all their vendors coming to this deal. And, and it didn't hit me until I was getting off the plane after going there and I kind of put this together and I went, why would people want to listen to me? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I started freaking myself out. But again, I think for myself, and I wanted to ask you this for others who might find themselves in this position, I talked, spoke with my wife that night about it. And I said, you know, I'm kind of freaking out about this. She said, look, you're there to share great stories of success. Part of it's yours, but part of it's the other people you've encountered through all your discussions. Just do that. Yeah. And it's what you just said. It's sharing your knowledge to help others so hopefully they can learn and glean something from that. And that's, yeah. that's where you get past that imposter syndrome. At least it worked for me. Is that how it worked for you? It does. And and the fact that I can validate my story, it allows me to, to get to other people to say, well, your story is just as powerful. Your conversation that you can have can help somebody because of your, your things that you've accomplished and problems that you've solved and ways that you've dusted off and gotten back up again. Everybody's story is valid. And that helps me validate my own and give me the right to tell and broadcast mine with the hopes that I can help somebody. And you have very well. Oh. 
Nicely Thanks, done. Man. Nicely done. So, can, can I interrupt you just yeah. for a second, Mark? I want to say out loud, and congratulations for this. I really like the fact that you bring your wife into the conversation. You say, <laughs> I was talking to my wife. My wife is so responsible for my success. <laughs> yeah. She will argue this, but but if it weren't for her and our partnership and our marriage and friendship, uh, we've been married 32 years now, and if it wasn't for her, none of this would be possible. So I know you feel the same way. I can just feel it coming off of, of you. Of course, so, yeah. Well, yeah. Th- 37 years for us here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, my mom told me something before I was married and she told me this when I was a kid. And it goes back to what we've all heard. Surround yourself with great people. And yes, that that saying that uh, you are the culmination of the five people you spend most of your time with. And Mm -hmm. I remember my mom saying, marry a woman who you consider above your station, meaning someone you think is smarter than you. And those are the people you should also hang out with. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. You know, so I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. And yeah, I love my wife, Jill, dearly. She's definitely supported me during many successful times and many not so successful, challenging times. But she's always there to support me. So uh, we're both very lucky guys. That's for sure. (laughs) Most most definitely. (laughs) When you look ahead at things to come, bucket list type things, and I know you've got uh, a new season coming up. I mean, you're doing your TV shows, your paint education. I mean, all these things. And we're going to start about this uh, trade school you're starting too, which is phenomenal. What's the bucket list look like for you in the next? Let's not go too far out because if we'd all thought what we were going to have to deal with in the last two years, boy, uh, maybe we would have had a different perspective. But yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, holy cow! So bucket list. Okay, so I've learned to set goals. We can't reach goals unless we set goals. My phrase is speak the dream, say it out loud. Mm-hmm. It may not come true, but if you don't speak it, if you if you quietly angst and hope, nothing is ever going to manifest. Nothing is ever going to. You have to set goals. When I design and build a car, you got to. I start with a digital rendering. You have to start from jump, and you have to speak the dream. So I'm going to say it out loud right here and right now. Okay. Ten years ago, I I had coined the phrase America's Auto Body and Restoration Coach. I've achieved that. I love that. I'm that. Now I want to be the automotive micro. Micro is a huge mentor. He has no idea. I've never met Micro. Oh, Mike. I thought you said Micro like small. Micro. No, 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 the Mike Micro. Rowe. Dirty Jobs Micro. Dirty Jobs Micro. Yes. He's he's such an incredible force yes. in uh, skilled trades, broadcasting the need for skilled trades training, which falls directly into what I want to do. He's an entrepreneur. He's a he's an outspoken person. He's got courses coming out on workplace integrity and, and work ethics. And I just admire him so much and his reach and his breadth in the industry, as well as his talent on camera. He's so funny. Um, and I'm man crushing on him. I don't care, Mike, <laughs> if you're listening to this, dude, I would shake your hand at an airport if I ever saw you. But yeah, and you would you would have to kick me off because I would be I I would be like, like, you know, um, yeah, where are we flying today, Mike? I want to yeah, go with I would you be like Ryan Seacrest with Larry King. I'd carry your luggage. Pal. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so I want to be the next uh, the automotive Mike Rowe and shout it from the rooftops about skilled trades training. That's what I want to be. I want to be recognized as that. It's wonderful to be at a car show and be recognized for the TV shows that that um, that I've been on and been able to to do. Uh, I owe my career to the people that watched. I always say thank you. I appreciate you watching. You kept me employed. And um, and that's that's the truth. I want to be recognized now for somebody that that is instrumental in in giving back and, and bringing light to the importance of a hands on career. My whole media career is direct result of that of the fact that I'm a skilled technician. Period. So uh, that's that's my bucket list, man. I want to nice. be the next. I want to be automotive micro and and uh, responsible for the backswing and skilled trades uh, training being brought back into high schools, into post secondary schools, into universities, into trade schools and tech colleges. Not just the private ones, but federal money being poured into. Uh, the, it's not a skilled trades deficit anymore. It's a skilled trades crisis. Yes. My discipline just happens to be automotive repair. But there's a guy named Roger Wakefield. He's he does the same thing that I'm trying to do for plumbing. He's mm-hmm. He's a, uh, you know, he does the thing, same thing. He speaks on the importance of getting a foundation in a skilled trade, and then the sky's the limit. So we need to, we need to do this, and this, I, I feel driven to do this. Can you tell? Uh, just a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't you get a little more excited? Uh, you know, sorry, to- <laughs> I'm a bit of a spaz that way. I love it. You know, two, two of the. Uh, 
charities of choice here at Cars Yeah that I've focused on is RPM Foundation and uh, RPM and TechForce Foundation. Both of those organizations are focused on exactly what you're trying to do. Mike Rowe, yeah, he's one of those heroes to me. I mean, what he's done, what he's doing, and you're right, we need it now more than ever. I talk to people every day that can't find workers and uh, young people who have gotten themselves in debt in college and end up with a piece of paper that's worthless. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We I will never disparage a college education. My no. wife has a college education. Yeah. She has two of them as a matter of fact. She has two degrees. I will never disparage somebody for wanting to get that. But if you're feel comp- if you feel compelled to go down a different route, I mean, I'm I'm old. <laughs> I've got salt <laughs> and pepper right here. I can go back to school anytime I want to. Yeah. I can go to to online universities. Guess what COVID taught us? Online learning is valid. Yes. So if I want to, I can get a degree. You can get. You might have a degree. I don't know. We we need to have a beer once. You know. And, <laughs> I do. And, and yep, I do. So um, you know. So that's the thing. It's not a roadblock if you don't have a degree. And and you can create a noble and financially uh, successful and great career without one. Now, well said. That could be a long multi-hour show right there. Yes, sir. In, in place. Hey, let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Was there a special vehicle or is there? What was it? And maybe share a story about that ride. I have been so blessed and fortunate to be able to play with other people's parts and money <laughs> for the last, what's 18 years in television yeah. and sponsored parts and all that kind of stuff. And th- there's been bucket list vehicles. I've sat in million dollar Shelby's. I've, um, there's been all these unbelievable vehicles. The ones that are near and dear to me are the ones that I've, I've, I've built. And, you know, people ask me, what's your favorite vehicle that you ever had your hands on? <laughs> yeah. And my answer is the next one. The next one. But I want to tell a little bit of a story here. One of the first trucks I ever known, I hosted the show called Trucks and Trucks tech for almost 10 years on spike and then later on it became uh, paramount network and um one of my first trucks was a 1957 ford f100 i bought it from um a man who was he was a stepdad to me his name was ken burnett and we just lost him this last year oh, and sorry. um Thank you. Thank you. And Ken was very important to me as a kid and taught me how to play baseball. And he was he was a dad to me when I needed one. And I, I bought this truck from him for one hundred and twenty five dollars. He <laughs> felt sorry for me. It ran. The tires wouldn't hold air. Uh, it, the paint was crap on it. But it was freedom for me. It was it was a truck and it was all I could afford. We, I, we grew up poor uh, or or as you know we, we grew up po <laughs> oh. <laughs> po yeah yes gotcha. so you know and when we wanted a vehicle we had to build one yeah. when i wanted you know I, and so it taught me the value of labor yeah. it taught me the value of hard work it taught me work ethic at a very young age and and i regret none of it uh, so this 57 f100 the windshield wipers didn't work and you know i'd have to literally reach out in the windshield and grab the <laughs> wiper arm because the motor was disconnected didn't work and and the windows didn't roll up and there, there was no seat belts in it. it was and it was an inline six with a worn out clutch and the three on the tree column it was all janky and um I was I was playing music and it was before I went on the road. It was between high school and figuring out, you know, how I could get the heck out of my hometown because I, I, I wanted that in the rearview mirror. So I get in this truck. I'm going to band practice. And this was 1980. So and I'm not I'm not going to tell on anybody here. The names shall remain protected so <laughs> anyway. So I go to band practice and it's down in the the drummer's basement. And on the oven is this is this tin of brownies. And and I shot it down the stairway and I, and I said, hey, can I have a brownie? I was starving. He said, sure. So I carved out a quarter of this tin for a brownie. I Uh-oh. scarfed it down on the way down to band practice. I think I know where we're going. And, and about an this. hour in. I started to feel really strange, Mark. I yeah. started to feel really weird, and everything was just it, it was different. So guess what was in the brownies, yeah, right? Yeah. It was a hash brownie. Of course. And unintentional ingestion of this and a lot of it. So <laughs> yeah. I could, I was no longer a functional musician, so it's like, I got to go home. So I jump in my truck. It's pouring down rain, and the wind is blowing, and it's cold, and my wipers don't work, and I'm in this truck that wanders left and right. I might have been doing 15 miles an hour in this rainstorm with my arm out the window, soaking wet, trying to trying to scrub the windshield wipers. So when I when I tell that story, it's ridiculous and it's kind of hilarious and stupidly dangerous. Yeah. But I want that truck back. I want to redo <laughs> on that truck. 
It's yeah. a one-year only front end. It's a single headlight when they went to the square body. Oh, it's not yeah. the, the fat fender truck. Yeah. It's the square truck with a single headlight. It's a really unique look. Uh, there was one in a movie called Little Darlings. It was a, a chocolate brown F100 with chrome reverse wheels. That's the, the bucket list vehicle for me. Wow. Well, I, I'm going to build that thing someday. So I, I know am. that's a long-winded story, but <laughs> there's a couple of different reasons why. And I don't know where that truck is today, but uh, it's probably too far gone to say, but I'll find another one. Yeah, sounds like something really worth doing. Yeah, we love to bring back our youth, that's for sure. Yeah, for, yeah. Me, for me, it's a Carmen Ghia, so there you go. Oh, man, great cars. So I'm yeah. going to crawl on your head and be a car psychologist. If you were a vehicle, what would you be, but more importantly, why? If I was a vehicle, I would be the Bumblebee Camaro off the first Transformers movie. Oh, why is that? Because it's a Transformer. <laughs> it's this piece of crap second gen F body Camaro with faded paint, rust holes in it, this engine that misses. But when it's called upon, yeah. it becomes this thing. It transforms <laughs> into something that is like it's extraterrestrial. It's this thing that can save lives and be and, and do everything and fly. And, and so if I can be humble in day to day, but when I'm called on, if I need to build a, a vehicle or if I need to do a TV show or if I want to do this, I want to be that transformer. I want to be able to call on myself and dig deep. And I was, I'm starting to get all philosophical about a silly <laughs> car. But literally, I, I thought about this and I said, that's what I want to be. I don't yeah. want to be a Lambo with going doors, blah, blah, blah. I want to be that. That's already done. It's already there. It's the best it's going to be in that form, in that sure. incarnation. But Bumblebee, man, the potential. <laughs> the potential, right? I love it. A nice <laughs> answer to that. We talked a lot about giving back here, and I want you to talk a little bit about this uh, development of an online trade school, Paint Education. Yes. So Paint Education University, um, it's available on my website, paintucation.com. It's an online trade school. I've, I've partnered with a company called Lightspeed Virtual Training. It's technical training. Um, it's mostly for business training. Their interface is absolutely rock solid. Uh, the gentleman that owns it, his name is Brad Lee, uh, Damon Johns. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, salespeople and speakers. Um, his name escapes me right now, um, but but he's, he's huge in the motivational world. All these guys have speaking platforms on, or educational platforms on the Lightspeed software. So I'm doing technical training on the Lightspeed VT software. It's a really great interface. There's, there's um, opportunities for consultations. There's a built-in testing, testing format. So I've got a test out after every single format or module in my course. My Paint Education 101 course has 14 modules. There's a test out at the every one, at the end of every one. There's a forced learning path to where if you don't pass the fundamental course, you can't get into the second one. You got to pass the test. Nice. So it creates accountability and it's modeled after the um, the technical training that I've been able to do for a long, long time. I was catering to the to the hobby crowd, to the guys that are wanting to do a better job in their garage that have made mistakes and want to recover from those mistakes. And and I'm still doing that. There's there's a lot of people that have signed up for Paint Education U that are that. But now I can cater to the people that want iCar points, that want their Exalta certification. I've partnered with Exalta Paint. I'm able to extend their certifications through my training and and extend Exalta uh, points as well for professional technicians. I'm under development now with for three different courses, which are going to teach people entry level body shop positions. So now they can walk in with a certification in hand and not and, you know, walking into a job scenario with no skills. They can be up to speed on, on, on terminology, basic fundamentals. An online course can never take the place of an in-person trade school. I know that. But I can prep people for it. And with my technical background as, as a recognized expert and my media background, I've become a really good video teacher that can really, really find the analogies and the ways to pass on the skills. I've also been doing an in-person course um, with the government for, for about the past six years where I, I, I do skilled trades and, and uh, refinished materials application training. And and that has taught me to be a, uh, a, a literally a trade school in my backyard, but but also a really, really good teacher, how to hit milestones, how to do that. And with the help of my wife, who is a public school teacher, I've, I've come up with way better teaching methods. The other thing I'm excited about with Paint Education University is that unlike a, a video, once I author or complete the production of a DVD, it's done, it's obsolete. I can't go in and change it. With the Lightspeed software, if I have a module, a new piece of safety gear comes out, a new spray gun technology comes out, guess what I can do? I can go and grab that module, I can modify it and upload it again, and the people that have purchased the course now 
they now have the new the new version, updated version. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's cool. updatable and and we're we're going to be doing, you know, waterborne paint. I don't know if you know about much about paint technology. Waterborne is a more environmentally friendly um technology we're going to be uploading waterborne modules and things like this so it's really exciting to be in that format and that's why i'm i'm going all in i'm i'm going to be absolutely focused in 22 on creating more paint education courses that cater not only to the hobby guys but also to the professional technicians on an entry level basis or an ongoing educational basis love it paintucation.com Yes. Yes. Very easy. You'll remember that word quite easily. You know, I always ask my guests about a book, but you've written a great book. Your patina creating and preserving uh, available through my friends at Car Tech Publishing. You know, they send me all sorts of very cool hands on how to books. I mean, they're the masters of that, right? They are. I really like their format. Again, it goes back to what I want to pass on. They're how to books. So they reached out to me. They said, hey, patina's hot. And do you want to do a book? And I said, only if I can do it and teach people how to do it the right way, Mm. because there's a whole bunch of really bad patina. And when people say, what do you mean patina? Well, it's (laughs) distressed furniture for cars. So you want to do authentic patina. I've done it on television shows and I've learned a bunch of different really great techniques on how to create either blend into existing patina or create a complete faux aged paint job. So that book is really great. I'm working now on my second book for Car Tech, which is about truck bed floors, the wooden truck bed floors, which started in the 1900s. And went all the way up until 1987 was the last wooden truck bed was floors. That? In, wow, they were was, doing them that late? I didn't know. Yes, I in the step side vehicles, Ford and GM. So there's really cool history, but there's all kinds of crazy great options. So this book will be out by the end of June because that's my deadline. Okay, <laughs> with the publisher. That's when by it will the be end out. of June. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, if you want a copy, let me know. I'll send you okay. a signed copy. But it's a really neat. It's going to be really neat editorial and kind of give a nice background and history of uh, wooden truck beds. You know, I it's love a it. it's a neat thing. Uh, you know. I learned this. I was up at a place called Bedwood Products. They do custom bed floors for late model and vintage trucks. Uh-huh. The And it, it makes perfect sense to me now. I always thought the hood of the car was the most visible panel on a vehicle. On a pickup truck, guess what it is? It's the bed. The bed. Yeah. It's the largest amount of real estate. It's the most. It's the focal point of the entire truck. Yeah. You can make or break a car show with the condition of your bed, right? Yeah. So I'm excited about the book. You should be. Yeah. Everybody loves a cool truck bed. Everybody yep. loves a cool truck. So I always ask my guests, if I could allow you to go on the ultimate drive, what would it be? And here's the deal. I'm going to give you any car. You can be with any person, living or deceased, and you can be any where money's no object space is no object there is no time object either because you can be with somebody who isn't with us anymore so what does it look like for you i thought about this a lot and there's there's lots of stuff you know could we go for a ride with carol shelby and the super snake and uh, yes we could could we uh, uh here's my bucket list okay john bonham the drummer for led zeppelin yeah <laughs> in his 68 gt500 dual quad four speed shelby So there's this story. John Bonham is downtown Los Angeles. They were recording at the record plant. I'm a rock and roll geek. I'm a historian as well. So John Bonham is literally catching air onto some of these berms in in downtown Los Angeles. If you've ever driven in L.A., there's hills and all that kind of stuff coming off of the mountain and Laurel Canyon. And and so he's doing ridiculous speeds. He gets pulled over in this car. He jumps out of the car. The cops behind him, he flags the cop, they pop the hood, and he immediately deflects and starts talking about <laughs> the, the car. Look at the dual quads, the four speed. So he, he talks himself out of a ticket. This wow. literally happened. He talks himself out of like a dangerous driving. He probably would have went to jail. Ticket, downtown LA, burning the tires off his Shelby yeah. and endears himself to the cop who probably recognized him. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. But that's Bonzo. So yeah. it would be riding shotgun with John Bonham in his 68 Shelby GT500 KR four-speed car, talking about rock and roll, talking about cars, <laughs> talking about that stuff. That, could you imagine that? That would be a movie. Yeah, I think that would be pretty darn cool. There's a creative answer to that question. I love it. Very cool. <laughs> you know, you're such you're full of such energy and excitement and positivity. This has been absolutely wonderful, this talk with you today. I wondered if you could leave us with uh, some inspirational words of wisdom. You know... There's a couple of different things. There's a quote I want to read. It's from Randy Pausch. If you don't know who Randy Pausch is, look him up and and look up. It's a video called The Last Lecture. Randy was dying of pancreatic cancer. And and this really spoke to me. I was in tears watching this. And if you're not, I, I get emotional thinking about it. And The Last Lecture, one of the quotes, beautiful quotes from The Last Lecture is, quote, the brick walls are not there to keep us out. 
The brick walls are there to show us how badly we want something <laughs> because the brick walls are there to stop the people who don't want something bad enough. They're there to keep out the other people. I love Unquote. that. I love it. Randy Pausch was inspirational. So on his deathbed, literally, he died weeks after after he did this last lecture. And he decided to turn it around and give of his experience to try and inspire. He was a uh, professor at Carnegie Mellon University, if you don't know. And uh, if, if, if I can direct anybody to that, um, you know, read that. Go down the rabbit hole of the last lecture. Uh, there's lots of great books. There, there's a, a book I want to talk about there, the, to mention, Side Hustle Millionaire by Tony Watley. It teaches you how to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Creative Visualization from Shakti Gawain. It's a woo-woo book about meditation and visualization. But if you've ever watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, guess what he does? Guess what was instrumental in his career is, is visualization. So the things that I want to pass on are be unafraid. Learn about Randy Pausch and the, and, and, and the last lecture. Mentor people when you have the chance. If you can even, you know, a kid at a car show, somebody in a bookstore, somebody that asks a question, if you can pass on some skill and some knowledge, do it. Take the opportunity. You never know what that, uh, what that message is going to mean to somebody down the road in life. And, you know, like I said, I figured out what I want to be when I grow up. So <laughs> if you can turn anybody on to Paint Education University, we can, we can, maybe we can craft the passion in somebody that, that I want to share, that I want to pass on and, and create a different career path. Maybe somebody that's, that's at the fulcrum of making bad decisions versus good positions or decisions maybe we can pass that information on and 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 just do better you know yeah. so mentor when you can um allow me to mentor if i can help you awesome awesome yeah you mentioned tony Watley. he's been a guest on the show I've become friends kind of facebook friends with him he's another one yeah. of those coaches and mentors for people doing a wonderful job out there tony yeah. tony's the one that invited me to be a keynote at his event in arizona there you go uh, yeah smart yeah. man yeah he's done really well <laughs> and uh, inspired a lot of people and i was honored to be a guest on his podcast what are the many ways people can follow you and learn more about you I'm all over social media, Mark. I'm um, my handle on Instagram is at, uh, at Hands On Cars KT. At Hands On Cars KT. Twitter is at Pain Tates. P A I N T E T Z. Facebook. I've got my Kevin Tate's personal Facebook page. I've got the Hands On Cars with Kevin Tate's uh, Facebook and a Paint Education Facebook. I've also got a private user group for people that either want to help be instructors or that really want to do a deep dive into instructional. It's was designed to be part of the Paint Education University. But um, if if you're really skilled and you're serious about learning and not just throwing wrenches, um, send me um, send me a request to be part of our Paint Education University group. Um, paintucation.com that's where you can find Paintucation University and yes my course is for sale my subsequent courses are going to be for sale it costs an inordinate amount of money to produce yeah, no really kidding. good content and to ho house and host it online I have an, a crazy amount of free technical videos on the website you've got to dig for it a little bit but it's out there I've got a busy YouTube channel um, I believe in passing on information not everything has got a charge to it um, and also if if I can ever mentor anybody or help anybody Send me an email, Kevin go. at PaintUcation.com. <laughs> you know, my, my info at PaintUcation.com on, on the website. You can always reach me in this wonderful age of communication. I make myself as available as I can to people that are genuinely interested in learning about this trade that I so passionately love. And I, I, I would love to help that way. Absolutely awesome. Kevin's a guy that I call the time bender because you may be going, how does this guy do all this stuff? Well, there's a way to do it. <laughs> There are 24 hours in a day, you know, so use every one of them very wisely. <laughs> time bender. I'm writing that down. <laughs> time bender. Yes, you are a TB time bender. I want to do a shout out to our mutual friend, Tim Strange, for connecting us today because uh, Tim was on the show recently. Uh, another great guy. And I'm so happy that he put you and I in touch, Kevin. You really are an inspiring automotive enthusiast, which is the mantra here at Cars. Yeah. Thank you for being so generous today with your time and expertise. You are full of energy. You got me fired up. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. I hope it's not too long, Mark. Thank you. Absolutely. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!